When it comes to GPU-enabled deep learning libraries, the two main choices are TensorFlow and PyTorch. Now, in the earlier days, I say earlier, but really because deep learning as a field is still rather new, so this is of course relative, but in the earlier days, the choices weren't so clear-cut. Now, in 2017, 2018, when I used to teach deep learning on the MXNet framework, for example, at the data science bootcamp that I run at Algorithma, uh, students will frequently ask me why MXNet and not Tiano or CNTK or some other newer network frameworks. But if you're watching this video, we're probably in 2023 now and the decision process is a lot more straightforward and clear-cut. So for most data scientists and researchers who would like to take the first steps into deep learning frameworks that leverage GPUs, I'll point them to either TensorFlow or PyTorch. Uh, this is the website for PyTorch, I have it open in my browser. In fact, comes 2023, which is just about a month away, I have set myself a goal of defaulting to PyTorch when two or more options are equally qualified for the same task. The reasons for that will become clear over the series. You say, Sam, uh, hold on a second, you mentioned TensorFlow and PyTorch, but what about Keras? I hear you ask. And Keras is a high-level wrapper, and initially was designed to provide an interface to deep learning libraries like CNTK, like Tiano, like TensorFlow, which itself is based on Tiano, right? But since 2017, uh, Keras has been integrated into TensorFlow, which is why when you call it, you access it through the tf.keras module. So for when I compare TensorFlow to PyTorch, for all intents and purposes, uh, really what I treat Keras as a high-level API uh, over TensorFlow. Pro tip, you can actually use Keras without TensorFlow, but that's stretching a little bit too far from the main cause of this discussion. I'll focus on two main areas where I think PyTorch really shines, but I still think that at the end of the day, you should just pick whichever one that adds the most value to your work or career chances, or just learn both of them. Treat it just like another tool in your tool set. Now, the first one is syntax. PyTorch is a lot more Pythonic than TensorFlow, and its syntax is more familiar to anyone already well worse in Python. It has a strong object-oriented style, which you observe over the course of this series. This is obviously very subjective, but I know many people who tell you that TensorFlow is easier, or it has more documentation, it has more tutorial for it, and it supports a sequential API, which means you can create layer-by-layer uh, layer sequential APIs, uh, and all of that is true. But I didn't say that PyTorch is easier or more beginner-friendly, I just said that it's more Pythonic in that it feels like you're using a version of NumPy that is optimized for GPU. And second is that PyTorch increasing uh, popularity make it very hard to ignore as well. If you look at some of the trends, if I open up trends.google.com and I just compare PyTorch against TensorFlow, uh, you will see that even though PyTorch comes in a little bit later, it's, it, it's launched a little bit later from uh, things like uh, TensorFlow and Keras. Um, you see that over time though, it does, it does seem that it has picked up a lot of traction. And in fact, if you compare over the last maybe, I don't know, since January of 2022nd, uh, till now, you could see that the blue line has overtaken the red line, and the blue line refers to PyTorch, right? Of course, this is not a very scientific study, but you could also compare them to the amount of papers on PyTorch versus on TensorFlow, and again, you see the same pattern. You see the PyTorch really, really rapidly catching up, and that's very obvious if you're paying any attention to the scientific community over the last three or four years. And what I mean by that is that if you just look at all the state-of-the-art projects that has been launched in the last, maybe very recently, last three to five years, uh, for example, uh, you see that a lot of those state-of-the-art uh, papers, uh, they favor PyTorch over TensorFlow. In fact, the vast majority of state-of-the-art models in Hugging Face, for example, are in PyTorch, not in TensorFlow. So if you want to follow along this series, you want to have PyTorch installed, right? Right. And I'm going to walk you through the installation process right away, and at the end of it, we'll do a simple tensor multiplication in Python using PyTorch to make sure that everything is working fine. All right. So you want to get set up by first going to the website pytorch.org, uh, get started locally. And then choosing from the selection. So there is a selection here. And for me, um, I have to pick. So in this case here, I'm going to pick the stable. I don't want to have to worry about the preview nightly. It's probably still not very stable yet. It's probably some bugs and stuff. I want to pick that one. Uh, I'm on the Linux, so I'm going to pick Linux. If you're on the Windows, you want to take uh, check Windows. I don't use Conda. I use pip, so I'm going to click on pip. If you're using Conda, then uh, click on Conda. Uh, pick a language. For most of you watching this video, it's probably going to be Python. So I'm going to use Python. And then you want to choose a compute platform. Now, if you're not sure what compute platform is, I'm going to touch on that uh, very quickly. But for me, I know that I'm on a CUDA 11.7, so I'm just going to click on this one. But let's touch on CUDA a little bit, what, what this is. The, the moment you install the NVIDIA driver, you'll probably have this utility called NVIDIA SMI. So NVIDIA-SMI, okay, let's try that again, so it doesn't wrap around, so NVIDIA SMI, right? You see that there is, it prints out the CUDA version for you. So to me, it's 11.7, and that is why on the website, I'm picking 11.7 as well, right? So if you're unsure which compute platform to choose from and you have NVIDIA installed, uh, graphics card installed, then the best way to find out is to just type NVIDIA-SMI. Uh, if you don't have that installed or you don't know what that is, NVIDIA-SMI actually stands for NVIDIA Systems Management Interface. That's where the S, the M, and the I comes from. So pretty mouthful, but uh, SMI stands for NVIDIA System Management Interface, and it is a command line utility that provides you with an interface to monitor and do some management for your NVIDIA device cards. And I can open up the manual to read more about all this API by doing just man, 
and then just type NVIDIA dash SMI. And it would just tell me this is a system management interface program. Give me a few uh, commands here I can use. Help, for example, list list um, list each of the NVIDIA GPUs in the system along with the UUIDs. You can list each one of the excluded NVIDIA GPU in the system. Uh, you can take a look at the unit data instead of the GPU data. And then you can also just select a few information. You can say, I want to only see memory, utilization, temperature, power clock. Uh, you can do uh, some of this. So I'm not going to go into all of this because it's going to be too much. Uh, that's not even the main uh, thing we want to cover here. But here you can see a driver version and you can see a CUDA version. Now, if you don't know how to get your driver version or your CUDA version, you can leave a comment in, in the comment section and I'll try and help you out with that, right? But you want to have NVIDIA SMI CUDA if you have one of the NVIDIA graphics card. And chances are you don't even have to manually install them, right? The NVIDIA SMI utility normally gets installed in the driver installation step. So if you install an NVIDIA GPU driver using a repository that is maintained by NVIDIA, you will probably already have the NVIDIA SMI utility without with, with just any recent driver install. But what, what about CUDA? What is this CUDA? So CUDA is a parallel programming platform and programming model created by NVIDIA. That's about as much as you need to know now, but you can read more about the CUDA parallel programming model on NVIDIA's website. So just go to uh, developer.nvidia.com and then CUDA GPUs. So if you have a GPU that supports it, and you know that by just looking at, say you have uh, one of the NVIDIA RTX cards, right? So you just click on that, uh, it tells you all of this. And if you can find the one that is supported, then just go ahead and install the corresponding one. Now, if I look at mine, I see that mine is a GeForce. So I want to check mine way at the bottom here. This is the enabled GeForce, and you can look at all the different um, uh, product, product lines here. And if you have one that is supported, you can go ahead and just install that, right? And you install that by clicking onto the Downloads uh, tab. Uh, it asks you to select a target platform. And you, in this case here, I'm going to pick Linux and then pick an architecture. So this is the architecture that I have. If you're using something else, uh, you want to pick accordingly. And then finally, I'm using Ubuntu. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm using 22.04. Actually, I'm on 22.10, but that's fine. Um, this is all the long-term versions, all the long-term supported versions, right? And then you can just select one of the installer type. If you want to just install them locally, just doing an app install, you could just say local and then download that and then just install that locally. Now, what if you do not have NVIDIA-SMI? You don't have that CLI, you don't have the utility and you haven't installed that or for whatever reason you don't have that. Uh, if you don't use an NVIDIA uh, device, for example, then I'll show you another way you can do that. You can actually use uh, sudo and lshw that stands for least hardware. And least hardware gives you a few options. Uh, for me, I want to actually look at the graphic adapter. So I'm going to say display, right? So I want to look at the display, the graphics cards, right? So I'm going to click on that, put in my password, and now it's going to list out my display. So I have a VGA compatible controller. I have a TU106 GeForce RTX 2060 Super. So this is how I know that if I look at my RTX 2060, GeForce RTX 2060, this is the one here, then that's how I know that uh, I have one that is supported uh, to run CUDA. And then uh, it gives you a vendor, NVIDIA, uh, corporation. So this is the LSHW stands for least hardware, I, I guess. I'm not sure, but it, it probably means least hardware. So it enumerates devices on all the known interfaces, including USB, Firewire, Thunderbolt, I2C, any other decreasingly common buses for GPUs on desktop computers. Um, when you put a dash D flag, the dash D option, it restricts the device list to graphics adapters and not displays or screens or uh, as the device class name suggests. And if you put something like, if I say, um, instead of display, I want to say something like network, for example, then I could see all my hardware relating to my network and I can see you know what is it that I'm using and um, so I they have that uh, here this is the one dash G network this is the wireless interface I do have one I have a wireless network adapter this is the real tech semiconductor so I bought one and I installed that onto my machine uh, I have an inter Ethernet e interface as well so if I don't want to use wireless I, want, I can also use the Ethernet right if your output say something like product like here and it doesn't give you this GeForce RTX 2060 Super, but it says something else. Um, I, I Sometimes you see this, you say something like second generation core. Uh, if you see something like second generation core processor, uh, family integrated graphics controller, for example. When you see something like this, or some, some variation of this make, make, saying that it's integrated graphics, then you do have a GPU, but you probably have a very big GPU. If you see a word like integrated graphics in the product and not a separated, uh, dedicated graphics card, and then it means that your integrated, this integrated graphics means that it's actually integrated into the CPU itself. So your CPU itself has its own component which functions as the graphics card and probably uh, to save on cost, it used the ordinary RAM to store its buffer. And you do not have a separate independent removable graphics card and that means it's not probably not a good idea to do some very GPU intensive tasks like video rendering and deep learning and all of those things, right? You probably want a different hardware for that. We'll probably try and find a way to buy to buy one off Amazon, off eBay, where we can find them. But let's go back to the instructions. Let's see what we have there. 
So I'm going to drag my window on the left, clear my screen. I know that all the other information presented to me are correct. I just confirmed that with you together. So I have my Linux P Python CUDA 11.7. All you need to do is to just run a command. So just copy that and just paste that in your terminal and it will go ahead and install the Torch, Torch Vision and Torch Audio. If you want to do it in an environment, then just activate your environment. I'm in my virtual environment called Deep Learning. Do a pip list just to show you what I have there. I already have my NVIDIA, I have my NumPy, I have my Pillow, I have my Torch Video, dot Torch Audio and Torch Vision. So if I were to just run this, um, all of this, you know, all the, the command is going to say that all of that has already be satisfied, so it doesn't really try and uh, re-download stuff. It may take about 5 to 10 minutes depending on how slow or how fast your internet is, right? But while we're waiting, uh, let's see, let, let's read up a little bit about this, right? It says that it is recommended but not required that your Linux system has an NVIDIA or AMD GPU in order to harness the full power of P PyTorch CUDA support or RCM support. So to make it really, really clear, the summary is this. If you need to build PyTorch with GPU support for NVIDIA GPU, just use CUDA. Install CUDA if your machine has a CUDA-enabled GPU and then just check the right options up there. Um, if you're using AMD, not NVIDIA, but AMG, AMD GPUs, then you want to install ROCM. Okay, so RCM, if your machine has an RCM enabled GPU, again, you want to check whether your machine has one, has a GPU that supports that. If you don't have any of this, um, if you say it's just an integrated graphics card, you don't have a dedicated external graphics card device, then, then what you need to do is to just set the uh, CPU. That's basically saying, just use the GPU that is already integrated into the, the CPU, right? Not the external, uh, separate, independent uh, graphics card. And then assuming you have done all of that, then you could just clear the screen. Assuming you have done all of that, right, you could check for that really quickly. Pip list, you want to see that you have the um, NVIDIA and you want to have the CUDA and you want to have the Torch. Uh, Torch Audio and Torch Vision is kind of uh, optional, but you could also have them. If you just copy the whole command, it install that for you anyway. So now, now that you have all of those installed, let's just run some simple uh, arithmetic to make sure that things are working fine. All right, so I'm going to clear the screen again. And then I'm going to go into Python now. I'm on Python 3.10.7, but it shouldn't matter. You should now be able to say import torch, right? And depending on what the date for today is, let's say today is the, today is the 2nd of November, 3rd of November. So you could just say x equals to torch dot uh, ran and you create 11, 3, this is the shape and ran is just the random numbers and you could just print x, right? So it's just creating some uh, a tensor, uh, which is kind of like a, a numpy array if you want to think of it, right? So basically have 11 as the first dimension and then I set the tree within each one of them. So that's the second dimension of the shape and you see that it's all working. But what if you want to actually try to take some multiplication, for example, so let's create two tensor. Let's say tensor one, uh, just to keep things simple, I'm also going to just use the ran and I'm going to say three, four, size of three in the first dimension then size of four in the second dimension as a tensor two. And I want to say another one. So in order to be able to do a mat move, I want to say ran four. So I can do a mat move, mat multiplication that is, and then I can say torch dot mat multiplication and then I just have to put in my tensor one and then tensor two and I just have to put in the size just to see you know what is the size of that and I get um, the remaining three this is uh, no surprises there and additionally if you want to check if your GPU driver is enabled and accessible by PyTorch which is the whole point of doing all that then you also want to just check that CUDA is available there is a very uh, common utility that people use it's basically torch dot CUDA dot is underscore available then if you see true, it means that you do have the, it does have the, your GPU driver is enabled and it's accessible by PyTorch. PyTorch is able to call your GPU, all right? Okay, so now that you've got PyTorch, the next video in this series, we're gonna start building some fun deep learning projects using this uh, PyTorch library, this Torch. Um, and, and there's a, a, a whole ecosystem of tools that are built around that. And we're gonna do it step by step, right? In a very highly practical, hands-on manner, just like all the videos on this channel. So if you have those things installed, just subscribe to the channel and um, when I start to release this, you get notified. I'll get to explore how to build some deep learning projects together. Alright, see you in the next video. Bye.